Hello, everyone. How are you doing? I'm Brigitte Toruño, and welcome to Uno Souls Chat. Today, I am so honored to be chatting with Jen Sterling, and she is an Uno Soul. She is the chief redhead for Jen Sterling Art. Welcome, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I'm so thrilled to have you here. And, you know, I was thinking back to when we first met and I was doing the math. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's been over 20 years because I, um, I started Uno Translations, um, my other business, 24 years ago. Oh, wow. And so I remember it was shortly after that, that I went to the Loudoun County, Virginia, SBDC, the Small Business Development Office, and I was like, I need help. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had started two businesses at the same time. It was I remember you had the, the food business. Exactly. It was Don Tango Foods. Yeah. And I was having an issue with the logo and, you know, just some business ideas and how do I wear the two hats and so they were like, we know exactly who can mentor you. It's Jen Sterling. And I was like, okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> and, then, and you were wonderful. And I remember going to your office, maybe in Chantilly, Virginia. Yep. Yep. And I thought it was the coolest office I'd ever <laughs> seen in my life because it had all of this red color, you know, your color red. It had, and it had, you had balls, like red balls. And I think it's, that you and your employees sat on them, right? Yes. <laughs> Which is a great healthy thing to do, but it added so much color. So I'm always grateful for, for your help from, from the very beginning of, of this, uh, this road of being an entrepreneur. <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure. It's so fun to watch a new business start and help it become who it is. You know, yeah. it's just such a neat feeling. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, you know, again, I have admired your career for a long time, Jen, and um, you're doing amazing things. And it seems like the common thread is, is color, yes. which is amazing. But I'd love it if maybe you could tell us a little bit at, about your transition from graphic designer to, to artist. Sure. Well, I, I will say, having done branding for 30 years, when I met you, I was doing what I loved most. Mm -hmm. It was helping small businesses and helping them create who they were and express who they were. And when I got the my company large enough, I was no longer doing that. I was running a company mm -hmm. and I had staff that were doing that. And I was mm -hmm. missing that desperately. And, and the work we were doing was changing over and becoming much more statistical and social media and how many clicks could you get? And I, I lost the passion for it. It didn't have the same feel to it. Yes. And I went on a journey to really decide for myself what, where was that passion and where could I really bring the most of myself to the world? Mm -hmm. And it was my art, which I had always done, you know, for fun on the side, but had never considered it being, you know, a full-time thing because, you know, starving artists and all of that. And I thought I have to, I have to have a real job. <laughs> and I decided with my advisory board, I, I was like, I, I need, I need to, to take, take a new path to do something different. So I sold the company to my employees mm. and I left and I've been doing art full time. And I, I am back to that point. I was when I first had my business. And when I first met you, yeah. I am back to feeling passionate about what I'm doing every single oh, day. I'm so glad to hear that. That's so important. It's so important. It's it's just beautiful to have watched your journey. So thank, yeah, thank you. you. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I was wondering if you could tell us, when did you start to love art and color? Oh, when I was a kid. Absolutely. Um, my mom was always a, an art fanatic. She loved art. Um, and when I was growing up, she actually worked as a docent, a, a tour guide at the National Museum of American Art downtown. Ooh. So we used to go and, and mom would give us tours. I and mean, it was really cool and got to, to meet artists and go to art openings. And, and so it was something that she always fed in us, mm -hmm. um, in my sister and I. And um, 
I, it's, it's, there's something about color. And for me, red, as you can see, is still a main color for me. Yes. There's something about color that just feeds my soul. I need it. I thrive on it. And if I am in a gray space or a room with all white walls for too long, I get edgy. I, I need, <laughs> I need more. I need it to feed me. So I, I love surrounding myself with it and giving it to other people so they can too. That's wonderful. I have to say that I, I follow your social media and I think it was on your, um, the Facebook page for, for Jen Sterling art. You posted a picture or maybe it was your website, a picture of you as a little girl yeah. sitting with your dad in front of all these crayons. Yeah. Thought, oh my gosh. What a cool picture. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember doing that with him. It was Christmas. We'd gotten the 64 box, right? It yes. was a big deal. <laughs> but we had to put them in color order. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's awesome. I loved seeing that. Thank so, you. So I love that you work in your passion, Jen. And I mean, not too many people can say that. Yeah. So what, what would you tell people about getting to that point or, or figuring out how to work in your passion? Mm, so many things. Um, definitely take the risk. I think a lot of people that, you know, they've got the golden handcuffs of benefits and a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to walk away from that. Um, the first time I did it was when I started my first business and I left a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And I, at, even at that time, never looked back. I was so happy to have you know, freedom to really drive what I thought was important on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and of all of my values, freedom is the number one, you know, having the freedom to choose, the freedom to do, the freedom to be. Um, I will say it took until into my fifties before I was able to say what really makes me happy, you know, and what do I truly want to do and express in the world? I, I couldn't have been a full-time artist when I was 25. Yeah. It, it was a different mindset. It was, I needed to learn the lessons of being an entrepreneur for 30 years. I needed to, to figure out how to, how to deal with cash flow and contracts and, you know, the things about running a business that aren't necessarily fun or creative. Um, but having all of that under my belt makes what I'm doing now so much richer. Mm -hmm. And I, I have met so many people who are like, oh, you know, I wish I could do what you're doing. I'm like, you can, you <laughs> have to do it. <laughs> That's right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Step. take and the leap. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So many people are afraid of it and you just, Absolutely. Yeah. you have to try it. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. You owe it to yourself. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Absolutely. I, I always say, you know, it, it, I've been an entrepreneur for 24 years and um, I took that leap from the corporate world and it, you, it takes a little bit of crazy, just a little bit of like, yeah. okay, I'm just, I'm just doing this. I'm taking the leap now. And, but, but it is about having the passion for what you're leaping yes. for. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because that, that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. If your number one value is stability, entrepreneurship is not for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So knowing yourself is probably the biggest, most important thing you can do before making those kinds exactly. of choices. Because there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing exactly. wrong with having that value of stability. And we need the corporate workers and the government workers and everything else. And, but I mean, that's why there's this a beautiful variety of people in the world. Like exactly. keep it moving. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Jen, I was wondering, um, where do you get your inspiration for the beautiful paintings that you're doing now? Oh, thank you. It, it comes from everywhere. Um, I can be walking down the street and see somebody wearing, you know, some funky shirt and they happen to be walking by a billboard that's a different funky pattern and something about the combination of the two will click in my head and wow. I'll come back to the studio and just start pulling together colors and painting like mad. Mm. It's, it's from all different places, you know, and, and sometimes it just comes out of my head fully formed. Um, yeah. Not very often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So it comes, it comes from anything and everything. I, I tend to be, I don't know how to describe, I guess I'm a sponge is the way to put it. I pull in from everywhere. I read everything. I watch everything. I talk to people. I, I take myself on art dates and I go to museums and I soak up 
you know, all different kinds of art. Wow. And, and wow. that influence is just, oh, it all goes in there and it sort of sizzles around and then it comes out the other side in a completely different format. Mm. But it's, it's so much fun. I love that. And um, Jen, on your website, you have something where, and that really caught my eye that said, um, your goal, let's see, you talk about your goal being not to capture an image, but rather to capture the emotion behind the image. Yes. That really resonated with me, you know, that the whole idea of, of like that, that art, like that you created or that you saw in a museum and, and it really caught your eye. And it's like, is it, is it because of just the beautiful colors or is it something that it emotes in you, right? Like, absolutely. Oh, it reminds you maybe of a scenery from when you were a child or, yes. or oh, the sadness or the happiness. Yes. Yeah. When you get that, it, it's such a talent to be able to, to, and I'm working on it daily, trying to, to, to earn this talent to be able to emote to someone through something that doesn't look like anything, right? You know, I paint in a very abstract form, a very expressionist form, yeah. and for someone to feel what I felt when I painted it, mm -hmm. there's there's a lot to make that happen. You know, there, there's an artist I follow um, closely who is in England, and she does landscapes, abstract landscapes, mm -hmm. and they're very much, you know, the open moors and the crumbling stone walls and the wind and the... And you look at her pieces and you feel like you're there, right? You just, um, you can feel what she loves so much about that countryside. Yeah. And so the pieces I do, it's, it's very much trying to, to give that joy or that excitement or that panic or that, you know, that the trigger, the feeling that I was having at the time I made it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think I didn't set out to do that. Like I didn't say I'm going to do paintings and they're going to emote this. You know? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was, I want to, I want to paint. I need to get out from inside me what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to be the way to go about it. And the first time it really struck me was during the pandemic because I, I watched a series of pieces that I had done from, you know, the beginning when we were all locked down and super scared and didn't know anything. Yes to the, okay, we're starting to know some stuff, but you know, we're not really sure how we're going to go about this. And this is kind of crazy life and we're all still at home and oh my God. <laughs> yes. And then towards what I consider the end of it, I, I know we're still sort of in it, but towards yeah. the end, how is my life going to be different moving forward because of this? Mm. And I have three distinct paintings I did in those periods that I look at now and I'm like, I totally see it. I can wow. totally see where my head was in each of those. I would love to see them. Sure. And if you could share them, that'd be great. Oh, look at that. So is this one was the first one, the scary. Wow. That really says it for me. I even see like a monster or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was like a monster is coming. <laughs> you can it was, tell it I have was... a lot of little grandchildren now. So <laughs> 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 there might be a dinosaur there, a T-Rex. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> So let's see. And then the, um, the second new share. So the, the middle one, uh, no, that's actually also in Photoshop cancel. Let me close that. Um, the middle one was this one Ooh. and everything just felt like such a turmoil. I mean, you started to have a little bit of light coming in yeah. you started to think we're going to come out the other side of this, but you really weren't sure how we were going to get about it. Yes. Um, I yes. love it. I love the colors, the, the, the impression that it gives me of that, the circles, right? The, the turmoil, yeah. that confusion. Absolutely. But yet, but yet I see hope there too. Exactly. Exactly. The colors. They're, they're gentle. They're gentle colors. And then my last one, um, which is very different. I, I was surprised here. I have this in a different document. This one, Ooh. and this was when I was going through all of this thought process of what have I learned from the pandemic and where am I going and what's going to be different. And it, all I could remember was before it all started, life was nuts. It was crazy. I had so much going on. Mm -hmm. And this is what I was remind, reminded of. Uh. My calendar. My calendar was 
so many layers and so many colors and so many commitments and so much that didn't involve things I wanted to do. Yes. And so this was my reminder to myself that when I come out the other side, this isn't happening again. Ah. My calendar is going to be very, very deliberate, very, very well thought out. And none of this overlapping multicolor crap. (laughs) Ah, I love that, Jen. That really says so much because that that was part of the silver lining that came out of the pandemic, right? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know that you know, every, everything went to Zoom. And then I just realized, whoa, I am on like a thousand Zoom calls per week. What is this? And then I, as I started to evaluate, I had to start um, crossing some things off my list because yep. it just wasn't realistic that I could maintain all of it. And it was eye-opening. It is. I was doing that in person before. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and everybody was saying, oh, I could never work remotely. Oh, my company could never do this, that, or the other thing. And then boom, in the space of 24 hours, we were all doing it. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, for me, uh, for 24 years, I've been home-based. So I was already in um, in the COVID format when it hit. So that was one thing where it was like, okay, we don't have to adjust to that. <laughs> yes. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Jen. Oh, thank you. Very powerful. Um, in, in terms of that, I was wondering, you know, just like these, these three paintings, or actually four, they express a story, right? And I know that you get commissions because I, people love your work. Is there, um, Uh, a commission that you received that had a compelling story that you could share with us? Oh, sure. All right. So um, there are two commissions that particularly stand out um, that I can share that and can share is a, is a big deal because I do have some commissions that I can't talk about just because the meanings behind the individual pieces um, were something for the Um, buyer for the commissioner and it was specific to them and not necessarily a story they want shared of course I I get that yeah yeah. and and a lot of them are are they're very strong emotions because of what they've chosen and so they are they're powerful and they mean a lot but I can't talk about them so (laughs) but here are two others okay good (laughs) so um this one is one of the first I ever did and I think I can increase the size of the, well, no, I can increase the size of the type, but not the picture. Okay. (laughs) So um, this was a diptych that was done for a couple that were getting married. This was, um, they had been both been married before, Mm -hmm. but they, they have like that kind of love that you see in movies, that kind of love that just makes you want to retch because it's so perfect. And they were telling me this story about, you know, they live on their boat. And so they wanted a pair of pieces that they could hang in their, in their master. And they said, look, I, we want something that represents us and our relationship and how we we've found each other. I said, great. So I started asking all these questions to try and pull it out of them. And they told me that they've had this parallel existence their whole life, but they've never met. Wow. So even when they were kids, there used to be a show called, um, oh goodness, I can't even think of what it's called now. It was a children's show and um, on the show, you know, a bunch of kids would come on and play and, and oh, Romper Room. Oh what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so apparently at the end of the show, somebody on Romper Room would like hold up this looking glass and look through it and, and read off these names of kids that were watching and the kids at home would be like, oh my God, she could see me. Yeah. I remember. So, the show. They never said my name. <laughs> Well, the, the wife was on the show oh. and the husband used to watch the show. They oh. lived 60 miles apart from each other in the middle of the country. Wow. They met, I mean, they now live in, in here in Annapolis. Um, so they, they, all these things that lined up in their whole life where they were in the same places at the same times. And mm. so this piece, and it's hard to tell in the picture, it really, it has a little bit of the looking glass in the top right-hand corner of the, of the right one. Wow. And the left one talks, you know, a little bit about past history and what he had been through to come to this relationship. And oh. it, that the most amazing experience is when you unveil it for the first time and the commissioner, you know, takes that intake of breath mm. and this 
piece did that. And it was, it was a powerful experience to be there and watch that and to have them looking at it and discovering all the layers of their story that were in the piece that no one else would see, but they knew it. And so they recognized it. Oh my gosh, Jen, what a beautiful story. And what an honor that they chose you um, to, to put that, you know, that picture on, on the canvas. Yeah, super, super cool experience. Um, uh, this is the other one I would I would comment on. Um, the studio I'm in, I, I purchased the building that I'm that I'm in, and the agent who helped me started following me on social media and started watching my work. Yeah, she reached back out to me and said, "I've been diagnosed with breast cancer, mm. and the work that you do has energy in it and excitement mm. in it and and." boldness in it. She goes, I need something that I can look at every day that reminds me on my health journey to fight the good fight and to keep you know, work. And it was, I was so honored, you know, that, that, that she wanted me along for this journey and that she wanted this piece to play such a pivotal role in her health and her healing. And I, I went to her home and I, I looked at the colors and, and looked at what she had going on, you know, in, in the space itself relatively conservative, um, relatively dark, uh, burgundies and navies and stuff like that. And I'm, I talked it through with her and I was like, you do understand, I, I tend to paint rather bright. And she goes, yes, this is why I picked you. This is important oh. to me, right? And so I went back and I, I painted and painted and painted and painted and I, and I got too much into my head and it was, I, I, I was thinking too hard about it. And there's a, there's a quote from, um, artist Mark Chagall, that if I create from the heart, nearly everything works. And if I create from the head, almost nothing. Ah, so and that was what I was doing, right? I was creating from the head. I was thinking too hard and I had to turn it off. And so I took the canvas off the wall mm -hmm. and I turned it to the wall yeah. and I put a new canvas up and I just closed my eyes and I, I put myself in that position mm. and I opened my eyes and I painted. Oh. And this is what came out. And so when she came, I, I put both of them up for her so she could choose what fit for her. And she was drawn to this immediately. Oh. And this now so hangs here's in the central room in her home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's so powerful to, to hear the stories from people who have come and said, you know, I, I, I want a piece. I want something that makes me feel. I want you know, this energy, I want to see it every day. I want to be impacted by it. And it's, that's my why it's why I'm doing this. And so it just yeah. feels incredible. Oh, that's so wonderful, Jen. What an honor. What a beautiful thing. I mean, um, I wanted to talk about the whole idea of art being healing. And, and this is a, a perfect segue into that because I mean, I feel like, um, that's exactly, that's such a great example of she, she sees that as a reminder, almost a trigger, a good trigger to be like, okay, For life. I'm yeah. feeling, I'm, this is life. This, yeah, I'm taking a deep breath. I'm beginning again today. I'm yeah. seeing that I'm taking, that's so, so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you'll hear people talk about, you know, meditation being so important for people and such. And I am, I'm, I have trouble meditating. I, you know, <laughs> I try and sit still and close my eyes and I have a whole committee in my head writing grocery <laughs> lists and what am I going to paint? And, you know, I got to get gas in the car. I mean, it just, I can't yeah. turn off the voice. Yeah, it's not for everybody. Yeah. It's, it's not okay. for everybody. <laughs> so what I create is for those people who don't think in words. Yeah. If you're sitting with a piece of my art. You're not reading. There are words in it. I mean, the piece I just showed you has all kinds of healing words underneath that mean something to her actually written oh, actually oh written on the oh, canvas yeah. they, they were part of the painting oh, yeah oh okay and some of in some cases you can see them peeking through but it was important to me that the underlying messages be in there and yeah. when when she sits with the piece she can't read it she can't see them yeah but she feels it yeah so i i think that there are a lot of people who can't read their way into health or meditate their way into health or hear yeah. audio tapes and go into health. They, they need something that they can see and process yes. and feel from. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that so much. Um, Andy Warhol said, don't think about making art, just get it done. 
Yes. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it. While they are deciding, make even more art. Yes. <laughs> One of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, and, and Vincent Van Gogh said, I am seeking, I am striving, I am in it with all my heart. Absolutely. So that reminds me what you're saying, right? I mean, to to really just paint from the heart and try yeah. to take, you know, the head part away, the thinking. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's great. Um, I was thinking also of the importance of art in so many different realms, um, including, you know, how, how does it play, do you think, in families? You know, like there's... Um, young children. Um, I know your 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 daughter, who is no longer a young child. I yeah. I believe she w- just went off to college. She did. She oh, did. congratulations! Thank That's you. <laughs> but I mean, how how did you see yourself with with her in terms of art and introducing? How how is it a good way for families to introduce art to young kids? So absolutely. I, at the, as early as possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I think back to, you know, my, when I was a kid and my mom bought me the 64 box of crayons, right. It was, I needed all the colors. I, there was too much in the world. I couldn't do it with 12. I, I, couldn't do it with six. I needed 64. Yes. <laughs> um, with Rachel, my daughter, you know, I always, I always made sure there were art supplies in the house. I always made sure there were markers and pens and crayons and paper. And we had a cabinet that was right by the kitchen. Um, there's a, there was like a little butler pantry space that they had, I think it was a space the builder didn't know what to do with, but they put it <laughs> there. <laughs> so this was her cabinet. And I just made sure that stuff was always there and she could take it out anytime and she could express herself with it. And I think when a child chooses to express themselves, be it that they write you a poem, they draw you a picture, whatever, don't judge it. Mm-hmm. it's it's the hardest thing as a parent you want to sit down and you want to say oh but you could make their legs a little smaller or their head really isn't 10 times the size of their body or you know things like that <laughs> yeah don't allow them to paint what they express to draw what they think to to get what they're feeling out on paper and just have them explain it to you have them explain what it means to them or why they drew that in that way or you know, wow, you'd need a purple giraffe. That would be so cool. And not giraffes aren't purple, you know, (laughs) (laughs) because I think having that freedom to express is so vitally important. And the more that you have them describe what it means to them, the better they get with communicating how they think and how they feel and what their emotions are. And that will translate as they get older, whether they go into the arts or not, having that that base to work from will make them better communicators mm-hmm. better thinkers more self confident mm-hmm. uh, so i think i think it's important to have it in their life and it it crushes me when i hear you know more and more about schools cutting budgets and taking it out it's yeah it it teaches people how to think you know and, yes. and i think it's so vital in all industries so let's let's yeah. keep that <laughs> exactly yeah i mean you know i i think of art therapy right especially having gone through and, you know, again, sort of like you said at the, hopefully the finishing moments of, of the pandemic, but it's, it's been rough. It's been a rough time. And, and kids, especially with everything that was happening with schools, oh, you're, you're at school at home now. And, you know, there were so many changes. So I feel like, like art, even now, even if they didn't have the chance to have done it, during COVID for whatever reasons, that now that they, that they, the, their parents, their families, the schools, mentors, organizations that they're part of, maybe Girl Scouts, boy, you know, whatever it is that, that they, that the adults find a way to bring art to the kids, because it's really a great feeling, a great way to express what they're feeling and get Absolutely. that out of inside of them. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, um, Jen, you you are also an award winning artist, yeah. and I'm so proud of you. Congratulations! Thank uh, you. Can you tell us about about the award? 
Sure. So um, early in the time period when I had gone full time as an artist, I was entering shows and submitting my work in multiple places. And I had submitted my piece. Um, it was called Tahitian Pearl. It's it's only you know 12 inches by 12 inches. But I had, had basically come back from a honeymoon and was oh, trying to express all the colors that I saw in a Tahitian Pearl because they're wow. black pearls. They're just gorgeous yeah. but there's so many layers and 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 depth to it it's 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 incredible mm. so i painted this piece and i submitted it to this show and little known to me it was selected as the international grand prize winner <laughs> wow that's such an honor yes i mean i when when you I, I was blown away and i was i was very much in the beginning stages of my art career as a as a painter as opposed to a designer and yeah very much in the the imposter syndrome, which I don't think ever goes away. <laughs> right. Yes. But I was right in the throes of it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And to get that acknowledgement of my work and to say, oh, I'm on the right path. You know, it, right. it was encouragement to me to keep going. And and I was just I was speechless when I found out. And yeah. I and wow. thousands and thousands of people submit their work to this. This was with an international arts magazine and it it was I, I'm like, okay, well, where do I go from here? <laughs> <laughs> well, such, such validation. And of course, I'm not surprised that you got that at such oh, an early you. place in your career, because going back to where we started the conversation, it's your passion. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it's something that you really just, it just makes you fully who you are to be able to work in this, in this feel that you love. So it's so great and validating, I imagine, to think, wow, somebody sees that. You know, yes. somebody, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, <laughs> Jen, where where can we find your art? Are you in galleries or do, or do you have one that we can, I mean, I would love to go and, and look at your work. <laughs> yes. No, I would love to have you to the studio anytime. So oh, I'm a working artist studio in Annapolis. Okay. Um, and I have a small gallery in the front where I hang current work that's that's cycling through the the gallery or through the studio. Um, otherwise, I have work pieces here and there in various galleries around the, the region um, mm -hmm. that are accepted into shows. And I am currently working towards a one man show that will open at the end of September um, this year and will run through October at the Chesapeake Arts Center. Oh, wonderful. Um, they're going to be spotlighting a lot of my larger pieces, which are, are hard to hang in a lot of the smaller galleries here in Annapolis. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, very excited. I have a huge, huge piece that's going to centerpiece that one. So oh, fun. Yeah. And so um, I'd love if you could give us um, uh, give me the address and so forth. And we can put it when in, in the social media when we post absolutely our, our chat because I know people would love to go see it and I would too it sounds I would cool. love that yeah I, I list them all on the website as well so people can always see where the, the oh okay in the website good okay well we'll definitely put the website address in too awesome yeah. yeah um and I was wondering if you could please leave us with some words of wisdom oh follow that passion really truly follow that passion you will never ever ever regret it Wonderful. That's <laughs> very, very good. Very good. Very good advice. Well, and take the color with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, this continues to be a powerful time to love each other, to unite, to live in peace. Thank you so much for joining me, Jen. I honor the light in you. Thank you so much for listening to Uno Souls Chat. You can find us at www.unosouls.com and on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I would love to hear from you if you would like to chat with me. Have a beautiful week and see you at the next episode.